Some vintage Star Wars bootlegs are almost coveted more than the real thing, and some are extremely rare, like the Ooze series. But who cares about the stupid Ooze series? These are a dime a dozen compared to what I'm about to show you. These are the ultra rare wooden Star Wars figures. <laughs> Can you believe that the majority of Star Wars collectors, especially ones into bootlegs, don't even know that these ones ever existed? These guys are also a first for the bootleg zones, as these are the first figures I've gotten that were ever made in Canada. I've had some that were distributed around Canada, but these were actually manufactured in Canada. And since I haven't seen a lot of bootleg figures made in that country, I'm not sure if this is the typical quality from them, but wow, these are actually pretty damn good. A lot of the time with these, I actually have quite a bit of trouble remembering which is the legit Kenner figure and which is the bootleg. That one's the bootleg, by the way. Yeah. Can you even believe that that's what the real Return of the Jedi Luke figure looks like? Now, the proportions on the wooden bootleg might seem a little off to you, but they clearly weren't worried about little things like that. Instead, they just perfectly recreated Mark Hamill's face. You can see the nice bright smile on Luke's face, which is why the movie was called Return of the Jedi and not Revenge of the Jedi. Luke was happy to be back. Chewie wasn't quite as happy about it, but that's only because Luke's head was twice as big as his. Now here's the Chewbacca bootleg up against the real one, and here's an easy way to tell which one's the bootleg and which one's the legit one. It's kind of a minor detail, so you really gotta pay attention, but the bandolier on the Kenner Chewie is white, where on the bootleg it was made in black. But as you can see, the rest of the details were pretty much spot on, and they nailed Chewie's blue eyes. The legit Darth Vader figure is just a hair taller than the bootleg, and as you can see, I'm missing the cape for both. And just like with the real Darth Vader, this one also came with a lightsaber attached to one of his arms, though instead of being in his right hand, it's in his left, and um, the lightsaber's more of a staff. But, ugh, lightsaber battles in Star Wars were kind of a minor thing, so it's not that big a deal. Kind of interestingly, the only bootleg of Leia in this series was her and her Endor gear. But unlike the Kenner figure, the bootleg instead based their Leia on when she was in the Ewok village and let her hair down. And that's, uh, really the only difference. And now here's the legit C-3PO and R2-D2. Ah, uh, gotcha! Those were the bootlegs! Here they are beside the real ones. One thing you can really see that Kenner dropped the ball on is the expression on C-3PO's face. The bootleg more accurately captured that I wish I wasn't here look he had on his face. Bootleg R2 shrunk a little, and the bootleg was actually a little bit thinner, which is another way you can tell these apart. Boba Fett is another one where the bootleggers were clearly more on the ball than Kenner. The stupid real ones got all that gray going on, where the bootleg knew what color he was supposed to be, and that's green all over. But if you really want to talk about being more accurate in this bootleg line than the real one, all you have to do is look at the Emperor's Royal Guard. Now this is him with the bootleg. But here's the actual Emperor's Guard that Kenner put out. I mean, what the hell is that? At least the bootleg got the visory thing down. The real one doesn't even look like it belongs to Star Wars. Now, since I know a lot of you aren't going to be able to get the wooden bootleg, I'd say just pick up a Headman bootleg from the Ooze series. They're pretty plentiful. The Gamornian Guard, once again, very similar, but here's the way to tell them apart. The bootleg wears brown boots and the real ones wear sandals. Now here we have the Hoth Snow Trooper. Now as far as I know, none of the bootlegs ever came with the cape, so that's the best way to tell them apart. Of course, the real ones can lose their cape too, so if that happens, I don't know, you're boned. There's no way to tell. Here's the regular Jabba the Hutt figure that got released by Kenner, and like a lot of people, I always had a major issue with this figure. Patty needed to have a big smile on his face. 
face. It's really sad when you see how much more accurate the bootleg is in this case. I mean, this happy Jabba is pretty much the perfect representation of Jabba from that iconic scene in A New Hope. Hand me, Bookie! Why'd you have to fry poor Greedo like that? Even I get bored sometimes. Oh, You think I had a choice? Oh, Isn't that what you told poor Greedo? I just like repeating myself sometimes. Stupid Irish Jabba. Oh, 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 yeah, they even made Ewok bootlegs, and this one's either supposed to be, uh, that brown one or Wicket, but that's kind of the beauty of this bootleg. It can be either. <laughs> that is right, I actually have one of these. Even if you've heard of this line, pretty much no one even knows about Darth Ewok. Why this got made, I'm afraid, is lost to time, but it is amazing. Also, if you wanted the reverse version of Darth Ewok, well, that was available too, because of course it was. And here they are beside the real ones, just to show you guys that I didn't just break their heads off and stick them on each other's bodies. Only one vehicle is known to have been produced in this line, which is the AT-AT, but it comes with a special feature that makes it the even more rare three-legged walker, the AT-TT, or as fans usually call it, the at walker You really gotta feel sorry for kids that got stuck with the real walkers when there was stuff like this out there. I mean, look, you can fit two snow troopers on it. Wow, this was a stupid video, wasn't it? Okay, these are pretty much the greatest things I've ever touched. They are super quality wooden wood and have fantastic detailing on the front in crayon, which was something only reserved for the front of these figures, and really, that's the way it should be. Who is bothering to look at the back? That said, looking at the back, you can see some sweet stuff like knots in the wood. And the fact the characters are recreated so brilliantly is the most creative thing I've ever seen. However, that's not very creative, and the most creative thing I've ever seen is Darth Ewok, who cannot be outdone. However, he is outdone by the other Darth Ewok. And both of the Darth Ewoks are outdone by the fact that if you break one of these things, they just turn into even rarer figures. Ten. While there isn't all that much weird about these figures, they are possibly the strangest and most bizarre bootlegs I've ever seen. The ridiculously large head of Luke is so large, I almost thought it was a moon, but then I realized that's no moon. That's that's a space station. Ten. Honestly, if these had had a package, it would have sucked. They are far too good for packaging. The only good thing about a package is how long I can blab on about every sentence put on it in a Bootleg Zones episode, and that is always horrible. Besides, we get to see a prototype of one of these figures without a stupid box anyway, as on the backside of the at, -AT it shows us what could have been for the R2-D2 in this series. I think we were all pretty lucky we got the one that we actually did. Ten. Trash all your Star Wars figures and go draw on some wood with crayon and cut them out. Ten. And the bootleg zones overall is ten! This is the first time a bootleg has ever been a perfect ten! Mostly because a lot of the categories don't really work together to always be tens like this, but clearly these pieces of crap that I made when I was a stupid kid are the be- Wait, I, I made these? <laughs> That's not true. That's impossible! <laughs> Thank you.
So, in the early 90s, probably 91 or 92, my friend Joel and I decided to cut out the Star Wars figures we didn't have out of wood after coloring them in with crayon. We legit thought this was going to be an amazing way to get all the figures that we didn't have since we were at the mercy of yard sales for finding any of them. But you know, exactly the same, minus any accuracy or articulation or not being thin as shit. I'm pretty sure the novelty wore off fairly quick once they're actually made and our dumbasses could see that, you know, they're just pieces of wood we cut out with crayon on them. Oh well, at least we had fun making them and I guess we probably got a few play uses. But since our main goal was to make figures that we didn't have at that time, I have no idea why I made a snow trooper because I've had this snow trooper figure since before I even knew what Star Star Wars was. And, uh, yeah, Darth Ewok. Pfft, your guess is as good as mine.